Hi, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani here. And today's talk is going to be on the conventional medical approach towards treating thyroid issues, as well as kind of comparing it to the natural and more functional medical approach to addressing thyroid problems. So first, we've got to go over our physiology and kind of what's happening and why your thyroid is not working properly. From there, you'll have a good foundation that we can talk about what to do. So again, the first thing here is we have our brain. Our brain makes this compound. It's a, essentially a hormone called TSH. Okay, TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. It's being produced by the pituitary. Essentially, TSH is screaming down. It's yelling down to the thyroid gland. This is your thyroid gland right here. It's a little bow tie. It's saying produce thyroid hormone. And what the thyroid does from there is the thyroid spits out some T4. So T4 is known as thyroxin or inactive thyroid hormone. It's actually not active. It has to get converted to become active. So first things first, TSH is actually a brain hormone. So when they're running your lab test, typically conventional medical doctors only look at thyroid stimulating hormone to assess your thyroid. If it's too high, it's usually above 4.5 to 5. They say that you're hypothyroid. So the brain's screaming so loud, think of it as screaming, screaming so loud and the thyroid's still not responding. All right? The big thing is, sometimes your TSH can even be less and your thyroid's still not responding. We still see low levels of T3. We'll go there in just one second. So there's a lot of research showing that TSH is not adequate enough to be assessing thyroid issues. But it's this old antiquated kind of mentality in conventional medicine. So this is the only way thyroids are being looked at. But what a lot more cutting edge doctors are doing in assessing thyroid issues is they're actually running TSH. They're also running T4 hormones, free in total, and T3 hormones, free in total. And they're seeing a much more complete picture. I mean, if we were looking at a picture and all you could see is this much of it, you wouldn't be able to get enough information to tell you what it is. But if you can see so much more, you'll be able to give a person a better interpretation. And it's the same thing with your thyroid health. If we can see more of what's happening in your body, we're going to be able to tell you what's going on and how we can fix it better and more accurately. So again, TSH, talking to the thyroid, saying make some thyroid hormone. T4 is being produced. T4 is inactive. It gets converted to T3, and T3 is actually your active thyroid hormone. This is really important because typically conventional medicine, having seen hundreds if not thousands of tests, the only hormones that are ever looked at on tests for the most part are only TSH and sometimes T4. We almost never see the free or, to the free or total portion of it, or we never see the free and total portion of T3 either. So essentially, most people that have thyroid issues, let's say the TSH is greater than 4.5, the doctor will prescribe them thyroxin. So thyroxin is the drug that is used to treat elevated TSH or low T4. And that's actually known as Synthroid. Synthroid or the generic name is Levoxyl or Levothyroxine. So Synthroid is the synthetic T4 drug that is being used. The problem is, T4 actually has to get converted. So you can give someone all the Synthroid in the world, it's actually inactive, and it has to get converted from T4 to T3. So a couple problems. If you have an anemia, such as iron or B12 or folate issue, that's going to affect that. If you have low progesterone or hormone imbalances, so you probably know that as if you have infertility or if you have any PMS at all, you probably have some progesterone issues. Also, if we're low in selenium, the enzyme that actually converts T4 to T3 is a selenium-dependent enzyme. 5-deadenase uh, is the enzyme that's selenium-dependent. Again, you need cortisol to activate your thyroid hormone, and that comes from your adrenals. So if you're fatigued, it's probably a good chance that you have adrenal fatigue and you're not going to be able to activate your thyroid hormone. And if your adrenal's too functioning, if you have anxiety and lots of energy, that could actually decrease the conversion as well. So again, we have anemia, we have some progesterone issues, fatigue, selenium, also just inflammation, run-of-the-mill inflammation is going to decrease that conversion. 
All right, so we have inflammation, progesterone, fatigue, anemia, and selenium. So again, T4, and a lot of times patients are on the synthroid and they're not converting it over to T3. That's a big problem that I'm seeing, and we'll see low T3 levels because of it. So what we want to do is we want to look at the imbalances. We want to make sure we address these middle factors. This is kind of no man's land here. We want to make sure we're addressing that because if we just give, let's say we give T4 and T3 and it's bioidentical, that's still not fixing the problem if we have all these other problems that are in the middle here. So the key is you want to be using your temperature to monitor how your thyroid hormone is doing. So giving bioidentical thyroid hormones such as Nature Throid or other types of bioidentical, meaning you're, it's the same as your body. And being able to monitor it with looking at T4 free in total and looking at T3 free in total. And then we can get the dose up exactly to how the body essentially needs it. But at the same time, we're not ignoring these middle factors here because functional medicine, the goal is to get to the underlying cause. So if we're ignoring this, this is going to prevent long-term healing. And the last factor I want to touch upon that conventional medicine totally ignores is autoimmunity. So essentially autoimmunity is we have the immune system coming in and actually attacking the thyroid gland. So we make specific antibodies that come over here and start attacking it. We have TPO, which is a normal enzyme that makes T4. We have an antibody right here that comes in and attacks the thyroid. We even have antithyroglobulin that comes in and attacks the thyroid. So most patients I see are actually autoimmune thyroid. So even more, we have to actually address the immune system because if we have the T4, T3 conversion issue happening and we have an autoimmune issue, you see how we have multifactorial things and just coming over here and giving Synthroid, that's really not going to do much. Most people can't even convert it. And if you have an autoimmune condition up here, that's going to make it even worse. So gluten is a big one that affects the autoimmunity, um, even dairy and leaky gut. So you have to actually fix the autoimmunity. And there's actually a couple of infections that can also affect it too. The literature actually shows that Epstein-Barr or mono, the kissing disease, that can actually create autoimmunity. And a specific parasite infection called Yersinia and H. pylori. So these are the three major infections we look at when we see an autoimmune thyroid. So again, mono, Yersinia, and H. pylori, and we can assess for those and test. And if they're there, we can eradicate them. So I know I gave you a lot of information here today. Uh, feel free to watch the video a couple of few times and uh, go down below the video. You'll have details. You can get in touch with me, email me, ask me any questions you want, and there's even a link to schedule a consultation. Hope you found everything helpful, and uh, thanks, and have a great day.